At 6.10 p.m. Sunday, April 15, 2018, Kenneth Stanley Njindo Matiba passed on. He passed on at the current hospital at the age of 85 years old. A frustrated, very broke man who was once very wealthy, yeah, struggling and fighting to the bitter end. Those familiar to this channel will know that I've often talked about this man, yeah, the father of the second liberation. And this morning I'm extremely delighted that uh, media houses and Kenyans as a whole have remembered Matiba. The freedoms we enjoy today, yeah, the Kenya we know today, with all its faults and with all the things we're trying to get right, yeah, is a much better place because of Bwana Kenneth Matiba. That one, there's no doubt. Thank you, Kenya, for finally remembering Matiba. Okay? Now, the truth is, uh, I've been fighting tears all morning, uh, indeed from yesterday when I first received the news. I have been emotionally overwhelmed by the passing on of this great son of Kenya. People of Muranga, thank you for giving us this great man. Yeah? And the least you can do is to be like him or to try and be like him and shun tribalism completely. Because indeed, Kenneth Matiba was never Kikuyu during his long political career. Never ever. Indeed, many Kenyans from other different parts of the country who voted for Matiba, very few looked at Matiba as a Kikuyu. Okay? And that, you know, we have to give great credit to this man just for that. Yeah, when you know how a political uh, uh, environment is, how politicians behave, and how they use tribalism as a weapon, yeah, to divide the people and to get what they want. Kenneth Matiba remains the only Kenyan in history to resign a cabinet position without any pressure, yeah, on his own volition, and most importantly, on principle. Yes, that was one great thing about Matiba. He was a very principled person. In a country where huh, principled politicians do not exist. That's the truth. Why do I call Matiba the father of the second liberation? There were many other people who came out. Why do I, call, why do I single out Matiba? Well, it's for a very simple reason. In 1990, when Matiba, along with uh, Charles Rubia, held a press conference and said that Kenya must go back to multi-party, uh, to the multi-party environment, <laughs> Kenyans were shocked. Kenyans were scared for Matiba, yeah? Because the draconian government at that time of Daniel Arap Moy was very well known for clamping down very hard on anybody who suggested anything uh, other than a one-party state, government for life of Daniel Turetich Arap Moy. All the others who fought the Second Liberation uh, jumped into the ship after Matiba had launched it. Yeah, then disputed father of the Second Liberation. Something else important history will remember about uh, Kenneth Matiba. Yeah, he sacrificed everything. Yeah, for a better Kenya. Okay, at the time that Matiba started his fight for multi-party democracy in Kenya, he was estimated to be worth. 20 billion Kenyan shillings. Yeah, that was around 1989. An absolute fortune in those days. At the time of his death uh, last night, he was a pauper. At the time Kenneth Matiba declared uh, war against single party democracy, yeah, or rather single party dictatorship of Kano, he was a very healthy and fit person. He climbed Mount Kenya and he even climbed the world-renowned Mount Everest. That's how fit he was. A keep-fit fanatic. But last night, he finally succumbed yeah, to all the health uh, issues that had arisen after he got that stroke. And where did he get that stroke? He got that stroke at committee uh, maximum uh, security prison under detention. Okay? And so we can confidently say that Kenneth Matiba paid the ultimate price for a better Kenya. He has paid 
with his life. People of Moranga, wake up. You are much better than how you paint yourselves today to other Kenyans. Okay? Because this great son from Moranga, yeah, uh, demands that you rise up and be counted. Yeah, the best tribute you can pay to his life is to try and be like Matiba. I say try because it is not easy. I mean, which wealthy man can give up his wealth to fight for the masses, to fight for a better Kenya? And indeed, Kenyans in the end let him down. Kenyans have remembered him when he's dead. Today as Kenyans we stand condemned for not treating Matiba better. A great hero of Kenya, a great son of Kenya. We ignored him, we took him for granted. And now he's gone. I'm a very emotional person. Uh, so you'll excuse me, let me try and overcome my emotion so that we go on to the main purpose of uh, my making this recording. Yeah, uh, Which is to focus on a part of Matiba's life that should be of great interest to Kenyans even now, even today. And that was the 92, 1992 elections for President of the Republic of Kenya. A little background before that election. Yeah. Now, the father of the Second Liberation, Bonamatiba, was one of the founders of FORD, Forum for the Restoration of Democracy. Yeah. This was a gigantic party which united all Kenyans from all walks of tribes, from all, uh, from all walks of life, from all tribes into one gigantic, powerful juggernaut of a political party yeah, that sent shivers and mighty shockwaves right across State House. The political meeting held at the famous Kamkunji grounds in 1992 yeah, <laughs> still stands out uh, in my memory. I have never seen another political meeting like that. Never ever. It was addressed by all the major political uh, leaders at that time. Yeah, people like the late Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, Masinde Muliro, Kenneth Matiba, of course, and others. Or oh, I forget, Gitobu Manyara. Yeah, that guy must stand out, a great son of Kenya. Yeah, yeah amongst others. Now, that meeting took, uh, took place shortly after the return to Kenya. Uh, from London, where Matiba had gone for treatment after he had been released from detention. I mean, his welcome at the airport again <laughs> stands out in my mind. No other welcome back into the country can rival that of Matiba in May 1992. But alas, nobody was going to allow a government, a popular government, that would change the lives of Kenyans. No way. And so that every effort was made to dismantle that juggernaut of a political uh, formation, and this succeeded. Going into the elections of 1992, uh, the mighty Ford had split into two. Okay, One part of it was called Ford Kenya, led by Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, the late, yeah, father to Raila Odinga. And the other part was called, was called Ford Asili, led by Kenneth Matiba. The other major force in that election, of course, was Mwai Kibaki's Democratic Party, DP. Okay, Mwai Kibaki, of course, had waited until the very last minute when it was very safe yeah, to launch his uh, political party, yeah, which he did in Mombasa on Christmas 1991. Now, I very vividly remember my political lecturer reading a news report about this split in uh, Ford. And he commented, you know, he was like thinking out aloud. He said, oh no, this is not good. The Kikuyu vote is split. Now, in those days, I was still in the nursery school of uh, learning politics. And uh, I responded by asking him the question, why? why? Why are you saying that? Okay. He did not give me an answer. Instead, he told me something to the effect that uh, if I did not know the answer to that question, then uh, I was probably not his son, not his real biological son. <laughs> Gosh. Anyway, the same newspaper report must have been very great news for State House because they knew with a split Kikuyu vote, uh, Daniel Arapmoy would sail back uh, uh, re elected without any problem. Still, they had made one very major blunder. 
yeah, which almost cost them the presidency. Okay, they had forgotten about a man called Kenneth Stanley Njindo Matiba, or rather, they had greatly underestimated his popularity, his political popularity, and his amazing ability at organizing things and getting things done. Now, in, on your screens right now are the election results of uh, the 1992 presidential polls. You will notice that the vote difference between the winner, supposed winner Daniel Arap Moy at 1.9 million, and those of Kenneth Matiba at 1.3 million, is barely 600,000 votes. Now, as I've, always said on, as I've always said on this channel, I have absolutely no doubt on my mind that those first multi-party elections of Kenya were won by Kenneth Matiba. I have no doubt. And you too will have no doubt when you examine Daniel Arap Moe's, uh, votes in opposition strongholds. Okay? I will give you just one example. That year, I cast my vote in uh, Dagoretti constituency. Yeah? Now, in Dagoretti constituency, Daniel Moy had 6,000 votes. Yeah? Those votes were even more than what the Kanu candidate got in that particular constituency. The Kanu candidate at uh, that time was a man called Clement, Clement Gashanja. Now, unlike other presidential vote-rigging exercises we have seen since then, yeah, this first attempt was a masterpiece, okay, because it was done very, very carefully. The votes were spread around all across the country, okay, using things like poly, uh, provincial, provincial administration, yeah, a little here, a little there, and it just added up, yeah. What we saw in uh, Dagoretti was a bit on the high side, okay, it was a bit on the high side. Because in most cases, what used to happen is that uh, you, you, they would fix 200, 300 votes, extra votes in this polling station, that polling station, and they tended to add up very quickly. Now, if you ask anybody who knew uh, Dagoretti constituency well in 1992, they will tell you very categorically, there was no way, there was no way, absolutely no way, Moe would have gotten 6,000 votes in Dagoretti. So, how did Matiba win those elections? I think some of the strong points of uh, this great son of Kenya came out in those very memorable 1992 presidential elections. Number one, Matiba's amazing ability to attract extraordinary talent around him. Yeah, uh, Some people used to say it's because he was prepared to pay for it. He would recognize talent, he would be ready to pay virtually anything for it, just to retain it. And that is why during those elections, uh, Matiba had an extraordinary campaign team. Yeah, Indeed, the kind of campaign team that has never been seen in a Kenyan presidential race to date. And I'll tell you why in a minute. And number two, uh, his sheer popularity amongst the people. Now, one of uh, the secrets, one of the reasons behind uh, this great popularity of Matiba is that uh, he really felt for those less advantaged in society, you know, like the poor. He had some amazing empathy, yeah, that would be rare in any rich man, okay? And, you know, poor people sense this. They sense you care, yeah, and they respond by voting for you almost to a man. Now, one thing that shocked many Kenyans during those uh, elections is that uh, Matiba did not have any public rallies. Yeah, he didn't hold any public rallies. He didn't crisscross the country. Yeah, well now we know why. Uh, you know his handlers did a very good job of uh, hiding his health challenges at that time. Remember, he had been struck by a, a stroke. Yeah, he spoke more slowly. Even the few times he was able to speak, this was not the old Matiba. Yeah, and he limped, or rather, he walked leaning to one side, the right hand side of his body where he got the stroke, where he got his uh, first major stroke. Yeah, so really, he was a human vegetable. So the, getting him into public platform and campaigning across the country was definitely out of question. And so what his uh, campaign managers did, they printed lots of color uh, posters, okay? And then they used word of mouth, yeah? And uh, the main place where they spread the word of mouth out of were through matatus, matatu touts and matatu drivers. You have these people traveling in a matatu. It's full of uh, campaign uh, material, advertising and promoting uh, Kenneth Matiba. People strike up a conversation in the matatu about Matiba. 
and the rest falls into place because the man had a track record. He had a track record for caring for the people. He had a track record for achieving yeah, whatever he set out to achieve. So it was game shot. Meanwhile, other people like Mwai Kibaki, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga and others spent fortunes crisscrossing the country. Yeah, campaigning, talking to people on the ground, door-to-door -door campaigns, etc., etc. Even Moi held his campaign rallies right across the country, yeah, asking people to vote for him. And so when the results came out, people were just utterly shocked. Okay? Now, it has often been said that uh, to be able to vie for the presidency, and this has come out very clearly in recent times, as people have looked at Meguna Meguna as a possible future presidential candidate, People have said there's no way you can stand for the presidency successfully without a lot of money. Yeah? Money for campaigns right across the country. Money to hold public rallies in every corner of the Republic of Kenya. Now folks, here it is. The evidence that that is utter rubbish. Okay? The evidence that it is possible to campaign for the presidency of the Republic of Kenya and indeed win yeah, without spending a fortune and without campaigning in every corner of the country. Kenneth Stanley Jindo Matiba did it. Okay, okay. granted, admittedly, you have to be special. Special like Matiba was. You have to be a person who genuinely wants change for Kenya. You have to be a person who's genuinely fighting for a better Kenya. Not for a better you, or a better bank account for yourself, or a better wealth for yourself. No. For the people and only for the people. Indeed, there are two phrases, political uh, catchphrases, that Kenneth Matiba made very famous. One of them was, let the people decide. Let the people decide. Okay? No wonder the newspaper he launched was called The People. Yeah, people could have immediately uh, connect it to Matiba. And they made that newspaper a bestseller very quickly. Yeah? <laughs> at a speed which remains a record in Kenyan publishing history. The other catchphrase was in Kikuyu, and it went like this, Kogana Kwega. Yeah, forgive my Kikuyu, it's not perfect. But what it means, loosely translated, is to say and to do. Okay? Because, you know, politicians in Kenya have been known to talk, 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 say a lot of things, but they don't do anything. Yeah? Matiba always stood on what he says is what he does. Yeah, you don't just say and say. You say and you do. And Matiba stuck to that to the end of his days. Folks, we mourn a very great Kenyan. A great son of Kenyan, Kenya. Somebody who, it is very sad, did not arrive. Yeah, he did not arrive and even sadder, did not get Kenyans where he so desperately wanted to get them. Fare thee well. Kenneth Stanley Njindo Matiba. Until we meet again. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha. Kenya inchi yangu, Kenya 